This is Active Christianity's Living the Gospel podcast. Join us as we explore different aspects of the gospel according to the Bible and how we can put this into practice in daily life. Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Living the Gospel. I'm Kathy. And I'm Malenka. And today we are going to talk about an article written by Johann Oscar Smith, which is something, it's an article that Malenka and I have talked about before. And so we thought, hey, let's talk about it on the podcast. It's a really good one. It's a really good one. It's called Inner Battle. Do you want to read it, Malenko? Yeah, it's actually, it's a really short article. It's only one paragraph long, which was written back in 1912. And I think it's, uh, some of the lines in this article are just, they just really strike home with me. When I read it, it even each time I read it, actually, it sort of jumps out at me. But I'll, ju- I'll go ahead and read it. Yeah. It's, it's crazy that 1912 was over 100 years ago. It's more than 100 years ago, but it's, it's just it's, really... Applicable. Yeah. So it's called Inner Battle. An inner life and inner enemies to conquer, battle and destroy. The enemies of our inner life are those forces that want to scatter our thoughts by focusing our attention on external things. These enemies are the various desires that seek to distract our concentration by causing our thoughts to cling to outward things, things that will pass away. This is perdition. The things to which the heart was attached pass away while the person himself, who is an eternal being, is filled with nothing but emptiness when he should have been filled with God himself. That is why it is so very important that we allow God to draw our minds away from everything that is external, the things that will pass away, and turn our focus inward to the source of life that lives forever, even as we ourselves will live forever. Then joy and unspeakable peace can fill us, beginning in this time of corruptibility and continuing into the unknown eternities. May the Lord enable us for this. That's one short paragraph, but that packs a lot in it, doesn't oh, it? Right. He really has a way with words. He does. <laughs> yeah. It's just the way he writes just is, I feel like it just goes right in. Yeah. The line that really jumps out at me is this one, this is perdition, the things to which the heart was attached passed away, while the person himself, who is an eternal being, is filled with nothing but emptiness when he should have been filled with God right. himself. That is so serious. Like if you think about it, that we are eternal beings. Right. And that's really and that's something to think about. Us. That's how God created us. We have a spirit that will continue into eternity. Right. And what he writes here, like you, when you think about perdition, you think uh, maybe a traditional picture of, you know, hellfire and so yeah. on. But this is perdition, that your heart is not filled, your spirit yeah. is not filled with God. And you, and you, go, you go into, into eternity, eternity empty. Empty, with a, and that's what our spirit is, that has a longing for God. Yeah. And you go into eternity with this longing and that it's can never, never be fulfilled. fulfilled for, oh. But this is what our that actually just uh, gave me goosebumps. Yeah, like that. it's actually I think that's the ultimate horror. Yeah, that you that that's what eternity is. Whereas, but I was thinking about this because actually he's writing this very seriously, like yeah. a real warning. But at the same time, I think what he wants from it, which actually he ends the paragraph with, is the exact opposite. Right, because it doesn't actually come across as like a doomsday sort of thing. Absolutely it actually, not. You get hope from this because right. I. His whole intention, I think, is to encourage us to the opposite exactly. of what he's saying. Uh, the way he ends it up with that if we turn to God and fill ourselves with God, then joy and unspeakable peace yeah. can fill us beginning in this time of corruptibility, right, 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 right where we're alive, yeah. and continuing into unknown right. eternity. So our spirit, actually, we can fill our spirit with the eternal here and now. Right. And that is... We take into eternity with us. Exactly. And this is where we really need to be uh, converted. We need to be saved. We need to come away from that natural human way of thinking, yeah. which is so dominated by our feelings and the lusts in our flesh. Yeah. And and just being, like it's written, attached to things of the earth. Right. And we, we should turn, as it says in Colossians chapter 3, it says that we have to turn our thoughts Set your minds the things on of things heaven. above. Set it's your a, minds on things and not above. not on things of the earth. Right. We can actually read that verse because I think yeah. that actually sums it up really well. Uh, where is it? Collisions. I would definitely say that these verses are the complete opposite of perdition. Right. Exactly. And it says, it, we can read it. Colossians 3 from the beginning. If then you were raised with Christ, 
So this is putting you in the position of the Christian life. Yeah. You were raised, raised with, with Christ. Christ. That's yeah. what we yeah. believe. If you then were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ, Christ is, is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Yeah. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Yeah. And then it comes when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also, also will, will appear yeah. with him yeah. in glory. Yeah. So the opposite of perdition. Yeah. And I've thought about that many times too, that it's written, Christ who is our life. So it's not just that like, I'm a Christian, but here I am and, you know, but Christ is my life. Right. So if he is my life, isn't that where my mind is? Isn't that what I'm, what my, my whole life sort of revolves around mm. that I want to be with him for eternity. I want to be like him for eternity. Right. So that's where my focus is, right. right? And that's that's where I'm spending my my time, my energy is to okay. get yeah. to know him and learn from him so that I can be like him, right? Exactly. But saying that, then does that mean how do we live our lives as a Christian? Right. Like, because we are actually on the earth, right? And Jesus said himself, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Right. So we are here in this world. Yeah. So there are certain things that we have to think about and we have to care about, right? Yeah, and that's uh, actually, they're good things to think about yeah. too yeah. and necessary. Yeah, like it's not, we can't say it's wrong to think about our job and do our job well. No. It's not wrong to think about our family and friends and care about that. Mm. Is it like, is it wrong to make plans for our life? Yeah. And, and is it wrong is, to have hobbies and yeah, enjoy things yeah. here? And like hopes about like things in this world, is that wrong? It, it, the thing is that from what Jesus says, it isn't wrong. He's not taking us out of the world, but that we kept from the evil one. Right. And that's that thing in the middle of all of this, that we have to have our minds set on the things above, that everything we do is because we love Jesus. Right. So when we're doing our job, we're doing our job well, we're doing it with our, everything that's in us, that we're going to do a good job, we're going to be righteous, yeah. we're going to, you know, yeah. because that's what pleases right. Jesus. And that, there's that verse too, everything you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, For right? example, So I'm going yeah. to do my job exactly. that way as well. And think of my family. They're the people that God has entrusted me. He's put me together with my parents, with my siblings, with my children. Yeah, and just any of your loved ones that you... Exactly. And they're there. I can do what he wants me to do in whatever situation I am mm -hmm. in my family life or whatever. Uh, and there can be a huge variety of situations that we face right. uh, as people. But in all of that, that I have my mind set on the things yeah. above. And actually, if you think about it, if I have my mind set on things above, and my goal is to be like Jesus, and I'm learning from him, I'm learning to be like him. Actually, I'm benefiting my loved ones in right. that way, because then I learn to react to them with goodness and patience and yeah. kindness and the fruit of the Spirit, right? Right. So, actually, it goes together perfectly. Exactly, yeah. We also meet people that aren't nice to us, that... Um and that rub us up the wrong right. way and that there can be a lot of different right. things. And that's not unusual. It isn't unusual. In fact, uh, I think it's very common. I yeah. think everyone experiences yeah. and it. And like our flesh comes comes right. up, right? Like yeah. we have that flesh. We do. Which... And there we have to set our minds on the things above. And as Jesus says, that we are kept from the evil one, that we don't right. come into bitterness, that right. we don't come into envy, that we don't, you know. Yeah. Uh, whatever the other one does, I can have my mind set on the things above, right. which means I remain good. Right. And I can bless them or I can just be righteous right. in all these things. Yeah. Because it's so easy for us to to have our minds in earthly places when things happen to us, right? Like, you know, someone is someone does something that we don't like and it's so easy to be earthly about it. Like right. try to protect myself. But that's not having my mind set on things above. No. If my mind is set on things above, then my only goal is to Get the fruit of the spirit and be like Jesus. Right, and that—that's and the that's what's important to me in that situation. Exactly, then. and that, that's exactly the point. Going back to that article, that we're filling ourselves with the things of God, so that when we when we leave this life and we go into eternity, that actually we are filled with we have a content of goodness of Jesus yeah. virtues of divine nature, yeah, as exactly. Peter writes about. And, and that that only comes through the situations that I experience in life. So, of course, I have to live this life on yeah. earth uh, responsibly, and I have to look after what's been re uh, entrusted to me. And the things I meet on my way, they, God has planned that for yeah, me. I have, to, I have to really see that. And actually, I need this life on this earth yes. in order to be prepared. Like, right. I, I need to 
be filled with with the eternal yeah, things, yeah. and it's now in this time right. where I can do that. Right, and and what, it's what Jonas Smith writes there about uh, what my heart is set on. Right, like I can have my heart set on earthly happiness, earthly goods, even even just that people will treat me right. That can be my you know, I want to be liked, for example. Yeah. But instead That's of that, very close. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th this is human nature. Yeah. But instead of that, that I have my heart set on the heavenly things. That what can I get out of this situation? Where, how can I please God? How can I live for Him? Yeah. And it's not, it's not that I'm doing this because I, I have to, and God is a hard taskmaster, right. and I feel that I have to earn my salvation. But I'm doing this out of love to God, yeah, and love to Jesus, what and, He's done for me, and because I have a hope. I have a for eternity. I have a heavenly hope. Yeah, yeah eternal hope. So it, it changes everything actually when you start to go through life like this. When you start to see your every little situation in your life not with these earthly eyes, like what's happening here and now, but when you see it with eternal eyes, what can this give me for eternity? Yeah, actually, it changes everything. It changes everything. My whole attitude to life, my experience of life, what I get out of it, people around me, everyone notices it. Yeah. It's uh, it, it's got value for this life, but above everything, it's got value for eternity. Mm -hmm. And I think we've spoken about this before, one of my favorite quotes, we've actually had a whole podcast yeah. on it, <laughs> that we're living here to be formed yeah, for it eternity. Goes back to that again. It goes back to that. It always yeah. does. Yeah. Um, that's why God has created us. And he, as it says in Ecclesiastes, that is put eternity, eternity into, into our hearts. hearts. And he wants us to spend eternity with him. Yeah. He doesn't want us to go into perdition. No. That's not God's purpose. Absolutely like it, it's, it's Some uh, representations of God is this angry God who's always angry, who's out to punish us. No. It's the opposite. He wants to. He wants to, the very best He us. wants to have our spirits. Yeah. He wants to have communion with us. Yeah. And so this, this warning that we read from this article that we really – have a look at ourselves. Yeah. Well, what am what am I busy with? I have a, only this one life. Where is my mind? I don't have two chances to live this life. Yeah. But right now I am alive. And right now I can fill myself yeah. with heavenly things. Yeah. And that right now, that translates into eternal communion and fellowship with God. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. It's not just what's happening here. It's, in, in fact, there are what's long happening lines here that work to... is incredibly important yeah. for everything. Yeah. Yeah. It just reminds me too of these verses in Matthew 6, starting from verse 19, where Jesus says, Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Right. So if my treasure is in heaven, then my heart is there, and then I live for that. Right. And that, so that's a really conscious decision I make too, you know, that I that I have my treasure there. That's what I want. It's, it's what Paul writes there in Colossians that we read, that if you were raised with Christ, was I? Yes, that's what I believe. Yeah. I, I have given my life to Jesus. Yeah. I have put off my old life where I served myself. I've been raised with Christ to a new life. Yeah. And that, that, that doesn't mean I'm automatically there, but then it says, then comes an exhortation. Then seek those things which right. are above. Right? right, and he goes on to say, when if if you died, he says, so that's that old life, and then comes a new exhortation. Therefore, put to death these yeah. things which are on the earth. Yeah. So it's a life of action, yeah. and and that that shows where my treasure is, right? Because I'm going for that, right? Yeah, and like if you're sitting here thinking, I don't have it like that, that doesn't. You can get it like that. All it takes is to get your mind set in heaven. You can right. to to start seeking heavenly things, right? right. Like, and it, it's a work to get there. It's not like boom, one day, all of a sudden. Like you have to, it's you have to practice this, getting your mind into those heavenly places. Yeah, and it will become that. That is just how it is for you. It, it, it's exactly, and when you see your own nature and you see the things that come up in you, because that's what you'll notice in the situations. Mm -hmm. Things do come up that yeah. you know you, you you're tempted to envy, you're tempted to irritation, you're tempted to discouragement. Yeah. All these different things come up, but that's not my life, yeah. right? My life is in heaven. Yeah. I've set my sights on that. That's where my treasure is. That's where I'm going, yeah. and that's why you get that exhortation. Therefore, put to death, because that means that I'm walking on that way to reach that. And then when Christ appears, 
I will appear with him him in glory. glory, Not with all my nature and all that negativeness that's there. I've worked with that, and now I will appear with him in glory. And then just maybe to close off here again, just rereading that line from Johann Oscar Smith. Then joy and unspeakable peace can fill us, beginning in this time of corruptibility and continuing into the unknown eternities. Wow, that is such an edifying, uplifting uh, thought. And I really think that is a really good way to finish this episode, to have that with us. That's where we're going. We've got another uh, article by Johan Oscar Smith on our website called The Spiritual Center of Gravity, which is a bit along the same lines, where you've got your treasure, where you've got your your point of interest in this life. I think it really builds up. It's a longer article than this other one. Yeah, it follows along the same thing. Exactly. And if you want to read more by Johann Oscar Smith, we have a whole ebook of his letters available for download on the website. So just check out the links on our episode description. Thanks for listening, guys, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye.